summer 20 pre-release features um, and specifically focusing on flow enhancements that's coming up in summer 20 and, and play, played around with that um, functionality. The release notes are still not out yet uh, but if you are interested in trying out these features I'm gonna link you to the pre-release sign up um, link and you can sign up for your own pre-release org and play around with these features. All right, let's get started. So one of the major, major um, functionality that I'm super excited for is uh, ability to use after update or after insert inside of flow. So I'm gonna explain what that exactly means and how you can use it and how we can start moving um, things from the process builder to the flows for those kind of use cases. So, um, understand or identify what kind of flows we are creating um, ahead of time. Um, screen flow is already existing. Um, auto launch schedule and record change were kind of combined under auto launch flow, but now they have separated that, which is awesome. Um, it gives you easy access to what you want to do right uh, ahead of time. So we're not going to spend too much time in all these three ones, but I definitely want to spend more time on record change flow. Okay, so let's click on that and hit create. And once you do that, and this is very similar to what we have today, which is using before update and before insert. Um, that's the default that's get, that gets selected. A record is created before the record is saved. That's the mode. And in triggers, if you're familiar with trigger, in trigger terminology, this is before insert or before update. But um, now with summer 20, you are able to also use after the record is saved and after the record is updated as well. So what that means for you is um, things like before, um, after insert where you need the record ID to perform other operations on the creation of that record, you will now be able to do that using the flow. For example, um, let's say you want to create, and this is a very common use case, Let's say you want to create a task or a milestone or some sort of record related to opportunity when an opportunity is created with a certain stage. In that case, to create a related record, you definitely need the ID of the record. Um, so if you are using before the record is saved, you are not going to have access to record.id. But if you use after the record is saved, so meaning the database operation has already been committed to the database. and opportunity is already saved so you have access to the record ID and you can then um, create other child records and use that record ID and any other fields from the opportunity. So that's one of the use cases but there are plenty of other use cases that you want to use after the record is saved for and I highly recommend reading about before even if you're not planning on learning how to write a trigger it's good to get those concepts in order to better use this admin tool. So you definitely want to read on before update, before insert, after update and after insert and what do they mean and what are the different use cases you want to use this functionality on because the understanding of that will really help you on how to start using this as an admin. So, um, and I'm going to show you how to create that related records and you're already doing this using a process builder probably. So when a record is created, um, create this related record using a process builder and I have done that before. But we're going to do the same thing using a flow. So I'm going to just keep it simple. Record is created. And I'm going to say after the record is saved, hit done. And the next step is obviously you want to choose which object. Um, so I'm going to say opportunity. And what this lets you do is add that object that you just uh, associated this with. In our case, I'm going to use a decision element. And we are basing it on stage stage is prospecting for example stage sorry um, and you're gonna say record which is opportunity dot stage name equals let's say prospecting hit done and obviously related to that opportunity create tasks just one um, and let's create a task record variable so variable var task and uh, data type of record 
object will be task let's give it a sec okay and hit done so assign all those different fields so we're gonna have an assignment assign task fields so um, we're gonna say var task dot related to ID which is the what ID needs to be equal to opportunity which is record dot opportunity ID okay and then we want to have I'm gonna make sure to assign all the required fields so we don't get any error um, owner ID or whoever owns the opportunity owns the task owner ID and then task dot status is equal to not started and maybe let's also define the subject equals if you want you can create a formula with opportunity name plus task whatever um, to keep it simple for this video I'm just gonna um, and you can add a due date of let's add the um, due date equals um, maybe opportunity close date so as you can see I've used all the opportunity fields including the ID field here done so now we're just gonna connect all these decision if it's stage equal to prospecting then do that on up prospecting and since this is a demo org I'm not gonna include description but opportunity stages for that to file we want to make sure it's prospecting I've closed it we don't need an account and it is assigned to related to the same opportunity and assigned to me which is the owner of the opportunity perfect so as you can see um, this is a new feature and you are definitely want to you want to take an advantage of that I'm still waiting on release notes to see what are the different limitations in terms of record uh, load or how many records can you update at once um, but one thing I've definitely noticed is that flows are a lot better in, than process builder in terms of different limits so maybe a good idea is to keep and make an inventory of all the process builders that you have and the triggers which runs on after updating after updating or after creating an opportunity anything that you're doing maybe you want to move that to flow once it's out um, GA okay um, so that was the number one feature and my one of the favorite features so now I, I have some test flows already created so next one is sometimes if you want to test it immediately um, you can just hit debug and test it out because it's a lot better than activating and deactivating flows multiple times if you are able to test it immediately uh, using debug just do that then activate it and to test it through the UI okay so in debug and special record save flows there's an enable rollback mode um, and if you have used debug before you have noticed that anytime you hit debug and you're testing it will actually update those records in in real time or in the real environment if you don't want to do that you can just enable rollback mode and uh, obviously set that ID so I'm just gonna take this. so that's the input variable save that and if you hit run it's gonna tell you rollback mode is enabled changes to add delete or modify records were not committed so this is really awesome because let's say if you're performing you should ideally not be performing tests in production but sometimes you have to or even in full sandbox then you can use this functionality to make sure your testing records are not actually updating the records in real time in, in a live environment so super helpful I'm not sure why this is not included in screen flow but um, something to look out for or maybe it's just a demo org that's why okay um, Another functionality that is super exciting is actual depend. So auto launched will run in run in a mode from where it's launched. So let's say for auto launch, auto launched flow is launched from a process builder. 
then it will run in the same instant same mode as the process builder which is i think system mode um but if you have used flows you'll always you're aware that you will see these errors anytime uh, the person doesn't have access to the record or the person doesn't have access to a field you'll get in insufficient privilege access from the flows of of course you want to put that in run in user mode but sometimes the user necessarily doesn't have access to the record but you still want to make those background or backend updates in that case you can enable this functional this mode so system context with sharing this means the user who is running it needs to have access to at least the edit access to the record even if they don't have access to the individual field it will still update it but this one which is new um, system context without sharing meaning even if they don't have direct edit access to the record if they're launching this flow it will in fact update that record even if they don't have access so obviously be very cautious while using this but this will be super helpful um, if you have those issues where let's say you want to update an account from a case and this is something I've also faced in, in my projects. We want to update accounts from case and the call center people don't necessarily have edit access to the account but we still want to make sure that we're capturing all the latest information of the caller. Um, so in that case you can enable this um, without sharing access all data so you don't have to give them access to edit the account but they can still edit it from the case to update those fields or whatever it might be so this is really exciting and it, it will prevent a lot of workarounds that we have to do to get this functionality okay um, so very cool um, another functionality that and this is probably for folks who are very familiar with flows and have been using flows for, for a while, is actually using the loop, loop, uh, loop element inside the flow. So basically what that means is, and I'm gonna quickly just add, so if you're using a loop, um, in order to use a loop, you need a collection. Count, um, let's say all the active accounts, and here I'm going to say all records so that it creates a collection variable for us. Hit done. And this is a collection variable and now we are using loop to loop through it. Loop through collection of accounts. And this is what I wanted to show you is uh, once you have the collection variable, you don't have to create a looping variable as well and this was super uh, somewhat annoying for me is when anytime you use a loop variable loop element you'd have to create a collect um, loop variable to then iterate over that collection now Salesforce will do it the flow builder does it automatically just like other enhancements it automatically does it so you don't have to create a separate um, record variable to just loop around so what that would look like this so let's say after loop you want to have an assignment to maybe do some uh, assignment from that loop variable so it will just look like this loop through collection of a time saver especially if you're building complex flows and if you have tons of loops you don't have to create these it auto it gets auto created for you so those are those are um, few enhancements that I was able to find um, and obviously I'm sure there are more enhancements but um, definitely play around if you can um, I will link you to the pre-release org um, and I'm waiting looking forward for the release notes so thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions